Well, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade, and all I can say is what a week. Really, when you think about it, what a year. It has been super crazy weather-wise across Houston, Southeast Texas. Of course, it was a busy active winter season, a busy spring. We got hit by a derecho with 100 plus mile per hour winds a few months ago, and now we are into hurricane season. And just the second month into hurricane season, we've been hit by a hurricane already early in the season. So of course we are tracking the tropics closely to see what's brewing out there. Do we have anything else to worry about? And of course we still continue to recover from what Hurricane Beryl did to us just a few days ago on Monday. Beryl did actually set some records and there are certainly some notable things to remember about this hurricane. It may have only been in category one when it hit us, but before that it was a monster category four, even briefly a category five hurricane before it made landfall right here in Texas. Back on the uh, July 17th, 2005 period, we did have a category five hurricane Emily, which at the time and up until a few days ago was the strongest hurricane that we've had on record that early in the season in the Atlantic. But of course, Beryl developed earlier than July 17th. So now it will go down in history as the earliest Cat 5 hurricane on record. Also, it was the earliest Category 4 hurricane on record. Previously, we had Dennis back on July 8, 2005. So that was several years ago. So Beryl now the earliest Cat 5 and Category 4 hurricane on record in the Atlantic Basin. Also notable with Beryl, not one, not two, but three landfalls. Of course, that first landfall taking place in Grenada with 150 mile per hour winds as a category four on July 1st. Second landfall was in parts of Mexico as a category two with 110 mile per hour winds on July 5th. And of course, Monday, a couple days ago, right here in Texas, just south and west of Houston, Matagorda, Texas, that third and final landfall as a category one, 80 mile per hour hurricane right on July 8th. And it was strengthening right up until landfall. So it certainly produced a lot of damage. It may have only been a category one hurricane, but the damage is widespread. Numerous large trees down still around a million plus people without power across the Houston area. That's down from around two and a half million people without power initially. The bad news is that We've still got very warm waters out here in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean, in the Atlantic. So we're looking ahead to potential future development. But for the next few days, at least for the Gulf of Mexico, it looks like things will stay fairly quiet. However, with the development of Beryl and with it becoming such a powerful and strong hurricane so early in the season, our Colorado State University forecasters started to rethink things. So like, you know, in June, we put out a hurricane forecast for the season calling for an above average near record number of name storms, hurricanes and major hurricanes. But we think there may be even more than that. So just yesterday, they decided to increase that number of name storms, hurricanes and major hurricanes expected for the remainder of our 2024 hurricane season. So this is the average number and this average is taken from 1991 until 2020. Normally we have about 14 name storms out of those about seven becoming hurricanes and out of those hurricanes, three becoming category three, four or five, which would be considered a major hurricane. Just last month, the Colorado State University forecasters were predicting 23 name storms, 11 hurricanes and five major hurricanes. But just yesterday, especially after Hurricane Beryl just blew up on us so early in the season, they're thinking we think this may be an even busier season than we were anticipating even just last month. So they have bumped that number up to 25 name storms out of those 12 becoming hurricanes and out of those six becoming major hurricanes of category three, four or five. We've already had Beryl, which was a major hurricane strengthening all the way to a cat five at one point in its life cycle. All right, the good news, Beryl much weaker now and it is far away from us. We want it as far away as possible. The damage is done, but at least it continues to move away. You can see Houston at the bottom of the screen. Beryl is all the way up here close to Detroit, Michigan, getting close to Canada and it has lost tropical characteristics. 
So we are calling it post-tropical cyclone barrel. Winds are around 30, 35 miles per hour, and it will continue racing off to the east, northeast around 15 to 20 miles per hour. So over the next 24 hours or so, it's likely going to pass north of Buffalo, New York, and then it's going to be up into parts of Canada as it continues as a post-tropical cyclone, still maintaining those 30 to 35 mile per hour gusts. Of course, off to the east and northeast of this system, we do still have that risk for flooding. We've still got that risk for severe storms, including tornadoes, and that is where the action from barrel will be. So here are some of those impacts. You can see a tornado watch up close to Albany, New York, Syracuse, New York, and a severe thunderstorm watch south of that, all the way down towards Richmond, Virginia, getting close to Philadelphia. So we do still have some pretty big impacts from barrel. We've got these severe storms lining up. Some of those could produce tornadoes, and we've still got the flood risk. We still have several flood watches out for some of our northeastern states. So even though barrel is far away from us, it is still producing some damage, wreaking havoc. We just can't seem to get rid of it, but at least it is in a much weaker state and it is post-tropical, but still causing some problems in the northeast. So you may be thinking, what else is out there? Do we have anything else that could potentially head our way? Well, we were thinking it was going to be pretty quiet for the next seven days, and I don't think we'll have anything heading towards the Houston area, but we do have this little disturbance right off of the southeastern U.S. coast. This is going to be east of Orlando, east of Jacksonville. You can see the flare up on satellite, that moisture of increasing that big plume of moisture that you see. So this is the next system that we're watching. Generally pretty weak at this point, and there's only a low shot for tropical cyclone development, but we are calling it Disturbance 1 as we check out our tropical outlook, and it is pretty much off to the east of Jacksonville, Florida right now. Chance for development for this is low. It is going to creep closer to that southeastern U.S. coast, the Georgia, Carolina coast, even the Florida East Coast by this weekend, and it likely will push onshore by this weekend. But look at the development chance. Only a 10% shot within the next two days, even a week out. Only a 10% chance that this could potentially turn into a tropical depression, a tropical storm, or a hurricane. We do have some pretty warm water for it to work with, but I think it's going to run into some other issues that may kind of pretty much stop it from becoming too strong. So that is certainly some good news, but of course we will watch it closely. We've already had three named storms so far for this season. Alberto, which we received impacts from, coastal flooding from that one. Barrel, which of course we ended up getting a direct hit from as it made that turn to the east and northeast at the last minute. And we've also had Chris, which we didn't get any impacts from, but it did briefly become a tropical system. So the next name on the list would be Debbie, then Ernesto, Francine, and Gordon. The list goes on and on all the way down to William. There's even a secondary list of names if we end up going through all of these. We hope that doesn't happen, but you have to remember it is still fairly early in hurricane season. Typically, we usually don't get to the most active portion of hurricane season until mid to late August, September into early October. So we've got a long way to go, but we've already been hit once. So even if we don't get anything else, it's already been a long hurricane season for all of us dealing with the aftermath of a barrel. 